Hi everybody, it's me Kim from the Hypertufa Gardener. Today we're going to make Hypertufa Snowmen. This was so fun, so simple and easy. I don't know why I didn't do it before, but let's start and see if you can join in and make one too. They're so much fun, so let's get started. Now, as you see, I'm not going to go through the whole mixing process, but I've mixed my recipe of one gallon Portland cement, a little less than two quarts of peat moss, a little less than two quarts of perlite. I want a strong mixture, and this is so the tufa will turn out nice. Now, what I need for my snowman, my hyper tufa snowman, I'm using a pair of just the legs of a pantyhose. So I've cut the legs off. That's what I've got. Nice long piece so I could really make it as wide and as round as it can be based on that size. Got a lot more here. I don't wear pantyhose anymore. I don't work in the office, so don't have to worry about that. But I've got it stretched over one of these coffee buckets, so that kind of helps hold it open. So you can see I'm going to ladle my cement mixture, hypertufa mixture, into there to get my round circle for this snowman. And then I just use a rubber band to put around the outside or some other tie that will hold a little indentation into the snow. But those are the things that we need for this first stage. Okay, I have my pantyhose stuck here over my um, frame to hold it open. We've got our hypertufa mix already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start shoving it down into the hole. And we'll just see how big of a ball that we can make. It looks pretty solid. I'm going to make, I'm gonna use up about half this mixture and see where that gets me. So you can see, I've got that filled up, just assuming that is about the same. Whoops, it flipped off. Okay, now I'm just, I would have pulled it up over, but I'm just gonna lift this through here and lift it out. Okay, now let's get it shook down, oops, into the bottom. You can see where it's trying to run down to the bottom. I'm just going to squeeze it and get it down there. I could always just tie that off if I wanted to, but I think I want it to be down into the bottom. So I'm going to keep that. Now we're going to try some other types of forms later on. But the snowman is what I'm going to tackle right now. Let me see how that is. Okay, we've got it pretty well into the foot, you can see. So let me just try to squeeze a little bit more down into there. Since this is leaking a lot of the water and liquid, I've got it lifted up into this dish and it's still accumulating a lot of the fluid. So I'm gonna complete the rest of it inside of a dish right here. That way, there won't be so much water collecting on the bottom. So, here we go. Okay, I've got this ready. That's about the size, smaller than a football. I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this off. I think I will grab a pair of scissors so I won't have such a long tail to try to tie off. Okay. I'll discard that portion. Now this portion, I just want to tie it. That can be my top. So we see that. Okay. Now, you can see we got almost a big egg shaped there. Now what I'm going to do is grab another rubber band and down here I'm going to 
Now I'm going to take a rubber band and just sort of indent the top portion. I hope you can see that pretty well. I'll indent the top portion and shape me the little head of my snowman. Now you can see, I think that looks pretty good. I might could make him just a little bit bigger. Let me pull the rubber band down just a little bit farther. And fluff up that head a little more. I'm going to cut this off because I won't need that portion. And this is what we're left with. I got to make sure I keep him nice and round. And then he is going to dry. Uh, he will be a solid ball of cement. I think he looks pretty cute. I think I have him fairly even. So now what I need to do is just release some of the water and then I'm just going to have to set him out to dry just like this. So you can see him in there. He's going to dry and make our little snowman. I think he's going to be real cute. Now, I could put him on a more shallow tray Maybe so the water could drain out, but I don't see anything like that right now. I got an idea. I have the screen that I usually put on my, my um, soil box over there. And I think I'm going to put him right on top of there. That way the fluid can drain off and he'll dry more quickly. So what do you think of that little snowman? I think he looks pretty cute. I'm going to take this off a little so I won't have so much excess to trim off. I'll use this amount of pantyhose leg for my form. And we'll see how our second little snowman turns out. So here we go with the remainder. Got a lot left. This was a mix of one gallon of cement and about, I'd say, a quart and a half of the peat moss and about a quart and a half of the vermic vermiculite. Now, I'm going to see if I can use this whole amount. Now, we could use smaller. Uh, knee highs, things like that, to make smaller snowmen. You can see where that is going down into the bottom. Yeah, he's pretty liquid. I think my, my cement is just a little bit too watery. So I need to get him shoved way down in there. Let me restretch this. I think I could have cut him off even shorter. So when you try it, cut him off even shorter and then that will meet, will get it down into the toe a lot easier. So let me get the rest of this. This is even messier than regular hypertufa, I guess. But I think these little hypertufa snowmen will be worth it. Now, it's in the uh, November time period here, but it's kind of a semi warmish day. I mean, I call 40 degrees warm these days. So, yeah, doggy, don't be looking for more dirt to eat. I don't know if your dogs like to eat the peat moss, but this one seems to have developed a taste for the peat moss. Don't ask me what that's from. Okay, now I'm going to pull this off the edges. 
and we'll see what size we've got here. He's way down in there, so I think he's pretty good. All right, now, I think I'll just put him in here until I get him tied off. So, you push him way down, and I'll tie him off, and we'll have the same snowman here in just a moment. Okay, I've got my rubber band on him, and I kind of pushed it a little farther down for a larger head portion. I think I might like that a little better, but he looks real good. I'm going to set him or her up here beside her brother or sister and let her drain exactly the same way. Let me shift this one over out of the middle. And we'll get her on there. Let me make sure. Now this may make some little imprints in the bottom, but that shouldn't matter at all. Because they will be made to set up. Okay. Does it seem like I got it level? Make sure I got all the excess cement off the front. I think that looks good. What do you think? Okay, now this cement cured overnight in my basement. It just takes the one night to get it ready for whatever you're going to do the next day. Now, in my case, I wanted to go ahead and get them peeled off, get the pantyhose off, and that's fairly simple. Basically, you just kind of pull at that little top knot, cut it off, and then start peeling at that pantyhose. You can see that it comes off fairly easily. You just kind of have to pull it out of the crevices. The rubber bands, I was surprised that the rubber bands pulled out so easily. But if not, you may have to dig them a little with some kind of a sharp instrument, but just pull them off. I found if there were any, um, I don't know, runners or any rough spots in your pantyhose, it did allow some of the cement to ooze a little bit. And, but I just cleaned that up with a file. So don't worry if that happens. Just uh, use either the heavy steel wire brush or your rasp and get that filed right off. There's a cute little pucker thing it makes there at the top. I like that look. I may have to remember that for some other project that I do. But anyway, I should have gloves on, but I found it a little hard to handle the, um, I don't know, the lightness of that texture of the pantyhose without just using my fingers. And my nails are really messed up these days, as it is. But I think it really turned out really well. I, I think I got a better shape on one than the other, but I guess one can be the man and one can be the dumpy housewife, I'm not sure. But just when you get them all cleaned off, just take a brush and clean them off and brush the dust off as well as you can um, if you're planning to paint yours. Now, being snowmen, I wanted mine to be white, so I am going to paint them white. Now, you could have them natural, make them more rustic looking if you'd prefer, but I wanted to have mine uh, white. So I'm cleaning them off. If you have the time, you might want to um, even rinse them off real quickly. And just lightly a little bit and see if you can get it to um, um, then re-dry again before you try to paint. But they turned out real nice. I'm real pleased. Oh, here's my rasp where I'm trying to file off the little overages that ran out through the runners. I think it's really going to work nice. 
Now I did go ahead and make some smaller ones. I mixed up a half portion of this. The one gallon of Portland cement made both of those two bigger ones and a half portion made four of these little ones. And I again set those out over the uh, one night's period and they dried. These were tiny. They dried even better and more quickly. And then again, you just have to go through and pull that pantyhose off. It does come off easy. It's fairly dusty, so be careful. Wear the face mask, especially if you seem to have any um, sensitivity to the, the Portland cement dust or the peat moss. This worked out real well for me. Those little buttons kind of give you a nice handhold. This particular, uh, the four little small snowmen, I made those with a pair of dark black pantyhose, as you can see. So it looks a little different when I'm pulling them off. And I think these I did with the um, two heads, or I'm sorry, the two sections, except one I decided to use of the three. I'm not sure I like that. I might like it on a larger one better. Now for painting, I propped it up on some pedestals that I had on some old tables that I'm going to redo. And I used spray paint in this instance. Now those are, are flower pots, tiny flower pots. It looks like the little snowman has legs. Now, for your hats and scarves that you want to use, that's easy. Go to the thrift store, pay 59 cents a pair. If you want to, go to the regular store. But for me, I'll go to the thrift store, take them home, wash them in hot water, dry them in hot, and find really cute ones that I can get for almost nothing. Now, you would cut the toe off, so look for ones that you like the toe or you cut it on the band end for the hat. Either way works fine. Just see what kind of color you want to end up with and pick something out and you're good to go. You don't have to sew or do anything. I'll be showing you later exactly how I just cut these and made the hats and scarves. So here is my little Hypertufa snow family. I think it's really, really cute. The scarf is just from a fuzzy sock. In this first instance, I tried painting on the eyes and the mouth with some success. Now, my advice would be to put on the scarf and the hat so that you see exactly where you need the face. If you paint the face first, when you put the hat on, it might cover the eyes, something like that. So that's my advice for um, working on your little face. That's one of the socks that I used. And you can see where I cut the top off to get that little boggin, that little toboggan head. It's just perfect. You just cut it, it's ready to go. The scarf, I cut long lengths out. Now I've got that pinned together to make sure that it was the right length. It's perfect, so it'll just take a few stitches to um, hold that together and then it'll hold around his uh, the snowman's little throat for a long time and this one had enough stretch and give that it really gives me a nice long scarf tail so if you want to when you try out the socks try the um, stretchiness and the feel of it now, my snowman were little so I mostly went for kid socks but don't do your face before your morning coffee <laughs> Look at this one. It was a disaster. There's just no way. I thought about it and thought, well, it just looks different. But unfortunately, that was me. I made that. It's hideous. But anyway, this um, sock here, I used the um, band in to make this sock, I'm sorry, this toboggan, as opposed to the toe end like I did on the other one. I just cut it off a little and Later in the video, I show you where my daughter and I tied fishing line around the end of it. At first, I thought I would stitch the end across, 
and then just use it like that, which you could. But we decided later to use a piece of fishing line to tie real tightly around that edge and get almost a little um, snowball end. But in this one with the striped sock, it worked perfectly. I cut it through and then double cut it so that I had an extra long strand. This particular sock wasn't quite as stretchy as that red sock that I had before, but putting two pieces together worked exactly the same. I didn't cut the toe end. I thought I'll save that for another one. And as it turns out, that worked out just fine. Now, some of you are probably crafty and you could crochet scarves, little toboggans, maybe even little aprons, pinafores, anything like that, but I really can't sew. So here's, I can't stand this. I have to do this guy over. Mistake's gone. I wish all mistakes were so easily erased. Now, I decided later on, after I had painted some, I decided to use buttons to glue on for the eyes and the little buttons that go down the chest. They turned out real well. I had a little package of buttons that have lain around here for a long time and decided to use them. I had some red buttons, green buttons, black buttons, and they worked really, really nice. I thought they gave it just the right touch. And a paintbrush became the carrot nose. One of the paintbrushes I let dry out overnight, out of neglect, so I just decided to snip the ends off. You can do that with a pair of tin snips or wire cutters and just cut a little tiny amount and make your little nose. I think it works just perfectly. Now I had my daughter come in and do the smile on these. She has a little bit steadier hand than I do. And she made a decent smile for me. That awful one that I made was just pitiful. But I'm really liking how these turned out. They are very bright and colorful and they almost have a look of snow or at least frozen snow ice like you would see if you've made a snowman outside in the real world and they've frozen overnight. I think the button eyes add just the right, I don't know, ambiance for this. Now here's the spot I'll show you how we tied with fishing line to get this put together. I just have that little short piece and we kind of pulled it and kind of pleated it and then just a quarter inch, half inch below the top, tied the fishing line around it, knotted it a few times, and it did work perfectly. I think it makes an excellent little toboggan with a snowball top. It looked perfect. We just cut the little strings off before I forget. There's the little guy with his hat. Doesn't that look cute? I really like it. These colors look very Christmassy. However, they don't look for just only to put out in Christmas season. I think I can have these out all winter long and they'll look nice. So here's my, I don't know, the, the one in the other hat looks more female. The guy in the stripy hat looks more male, so I'll call this the daddy and the mommy, Santa Claus. And of course they've got to have a little kid, so dredge up one of our other ones um, to dress up as a children, as a child for this couple. But aren't they cute? I'm really proud of them. And they are nice and heavy, solid. I don't think I'd have any problem with these snowmen as far as them deteriorating. 
if if I had painted them or fixed them to go outside, they could go outside, but I don't want them outside. I want them inside. Now you can see we've got the noses on. I still need the buttons for the front of the lady, and we don't have their noses attached, but I will get that taken care of. And here's my daughter again. She is going to put on the smile for the little boy. I don't think they'll want me near it to paint the smiles of the eyes any longer. Look at that little scarf. Isn't that cute? Out of those two socks, I got the um, hats and the scarves for both the dad and the little boy. One has the toe as his hat, the little boy does, and then one has the um, cuff as his hat. Either one looks cute as a button. I just love it. Now let's not forget the noses. We use the orange poster paints just to repaint the little tips. The tips just happen to be um, that orangey color and that's what gave me the idea anyway. But once we glue those on, I used hot glue, but you can use um, Elmer's glue or any craft glue, whatever works for you. But this just turned out so well. I'm so proud of them. So you try one. It's very, very fun to put that um, Hyper Tufa mix into a pantyhose or a knee eye. I wish I still had all the ones I discarded after I um, retired because, oh, things I could make. My eye, my mind is rushing with ideas. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing these. I've enjoyed making them. So stop by again.